You are listening to 17 Karat K-Pop, the podcast that's a little bit of everything with a K-Pop twist. From pop culture critiques to the history of K-Pop to interviews with people in the K-Pop industry and K-Pop artists themselves, to concert and album reviews, to a deep dive into the discographies of different K-Pop artists, to K-Pop news updates, to stories about the music industry more broadly, this show tries to cover everything about K-Pop and K-Pop as it applies to the larger music and concert scenes. Visit 17 kpopweeplycom for more information about the show. That's 17-C-A-R-A-T-K-P-O-P dot W-E-E-B-L-Y dot C-O-M. Hello everybody and welcome back to 17 Karat K-Pop. I am finally ready to talk about my official ranking and review of the top 20 best new K-Pop, C-Pop, and J-Pop releases of 2021 from the past month. As always, while I share my reviews and the ranking of them, please keep in mind that so much good music came out this month as it does every month. Narrowing that down and then ranking these is always really rough. So if you don't agree with me, fine, I'd love to hear your argument, but don't come for mine, it's just what I think. I try to mix, as always, some objective and more subjective feelings about the songs and albums and videos I'm going to talk about today. But if I missed your favorite, I'm not trying to diss anyone. There's only so much I can include in a top 20 list. So with all this in mind, let's dive into the list with number 20, Bubblegum by Unknown Coon. Bubblegum is such a cute song. It really is a bubblegum pop song, and it's so fun. It's a really artistic way that auto-tune and electronic sounds are used in this song. It follows this back-and-forth dialogue of a kid and an adult. The kid says, give me your bubblegum, your trading cards, and your greatest dream. And the adult is like, sure, I can teach you how to blow a cooler bubble than anyone else could. I can teach you how to trade cards correctly. And I can tell you my greatest dream, which is, don't end up like me. He goes on to sing stuff like, no shop sells the way to make us happier, no matter what color of our credit card, your dollar bill, referring to the adults, is more valuable than mine, but you lost some of the things I still had, basically saying that as you're an adult and you get more jaded, you lose out on some of the joy of things like getting some cool bubblegum or trading cards. And so you think you make better decisions, but then your biggest dream ended up being not getting rid of that inner child that you got rid of. So it's interesting because towards the end of the song, he's then saying, the old me used to believe my hands could touch the stars. So the kid in the song is actually becoming more jaded and grown up as the song progresses, even though the song is basically a plea to not grow up. Really interesting way to get the message across, especially because if you don't pay attention to the lyrics, it's one of those songs that just sounds super fun and upbeat. And then it takes on a whole new depth of meaning when you actually stop to think about what he's saying, about give me your bubblegum, your trading cards, and your biggest dream. And then the adult says, sure, here's what I do better than you. And my greatest dream is you don't end up like me. Talking to kids in a patronizing way because you don't know how to relate to them anymore. Number 19. IU with Lilac. IU's new album is classic IU. It's got that music box quality to it. That very retro-esque sound, but also just light and fun modern pop. And this new album just continues to show off that classic sound we know and love from her. This comment I'm about to make is usually made when referring to music that's subpar. I mean it as a big compliment, because I love when a specific vibe is crafted by songs. I think this sounds like a jazz bar type of album. There's music playing, it's just a chill vibe all around, it's some sort of low-key party of sorts. And I put this on my list not just because it is that fun pop sound we love, it both has that cohesion in the music and enough variety to keep it interesting thanks to all the music videos that accompanied this release. So there's epilogue, there's the short clip for Flu, a master gambler in the video for Coin, and in Lilac, her character goes on a really, really fun train ride. It's got a musical movie quality to it. The video for Lilac, I also appreciate that it has a little connection to some of her other recent videos, like Eight, because it has that animated scene thrown in there. So her animated character continues to be a through line that I'm curious to see what she does with next. Aside from all the songs that got visuals to accompany them, my big recommendation from this album is Appa, and that is definitely for fans of the song 8 that she did with Suga. Number 18. Rosé with Gone and On the Ground. 
Her sound in On the Ground reminds me a lot Taylor Swift in songs like Blank Space. Especially when Rosé sings Every Day, Every Night. That sounds to me just like the Oh My God, Look at That Face line in Taylor Swift's song. I think that's Blank Space. Anyway, I think her sound is just reminiscent of some Swift stuff. And that's not a bad thing, I'm just pointing out it's interesting that she took this really unique new direction with her music. You could definitely tell it's Rosé music. It is not Blackpink music. So it's just a really unique musical path she's already carving for herself. Plus, her wardrobe for this video is top tier. Number 17. Weekly with the album We Play, which is just classic bubblegum pop, and sometimes that's all you need. I like to praise experimentation in works, but I also love just the classic pop stuff. And Weekly delivers. I think they stand out in my head because even if it's not sonically they're standing out as much to me, it's they have that X factor, they have this really unique vibe going for them, and they just really bring the enthusiasm. When they are going through the hallways in the after school music video and hanging out at the playground slash skate park combination, it feels like you want to join them. They are effective at creating the sense of FOMO. They make it sound really fun to go hang out and play with them, and that welcoming, fun, positive, peppy attitude, just a delight. And it's been there since the beginning. They've always had something unique and peppy and fun about their performances, burning props with them and things like that. So keep an eye on them. They're a really interesting standout rookie group to me. Number 16, Kim Sejun with I'm. I'm is just the name of her debut mini album, and her single off of it is called Warning, featuring Ill Boy. She really just has, again, kind of like Weekly here, a very fun, lovable personality that just comes out very strong in her videos. It's a really cool aesthetic video with a pastel house. She's living in the clouds in this beautiful house. Long story short, she basically learns to stop and enjoy your life and count your blessings and leave things up to chance. Don't spend too much time worrying about the future. That warning sign is often a false alarm in your head. So it's just a fun and positive message mixed with a really fun and aesthetic video. This album literally sounds light and fun, and so it's kind of like the epitome of a breath of fresh air. Number 15, Super Junior with The Renaissance. At long last, their long overdue and continuously postponed album is here, and it did not disappoint. It has a lot of twists and turns I wasn't expecting, different sounds thrown in there that I didn't expect. It just stays unpredictable as you're listening to it, and... That roller coaster of sonic directions is very impressive to make sound good and not just garbled and messy. The album starts right away demanding your attention with Super. That really starts the album off with a bang. Then of course they got House Party, which is just such a fun, wholesome concept for a song where these guys are singing about. For now, we just all need to take care of each other by staying home, social distancing, etc. We can have a party through our houses, through virtual connections, Please keep your distance and stay safe and we can make it fun to stay home. So they're talking about a literal house party. And it's really a funny video and led to a funny Twitter exchange because I love the NeNe Leaks It's Getting Weird meme. And it was the perfect chance to use the It's Getting Weird meme when I'm seeing Twitter interactions between World Health Organization officials and Super Junior. K-pop saving the world once again. Aside from house party and super, the tracks that really deserve your attention are Paradox and Mystery. Number 14, Blaze by LOL. LOL is this co-ed J-pop group I'm really into, and this song is just so well made. It's one of their best. It's got this anthemic feel. It's stadium ready. It's foot stomping and clapping along ready. Structural similarities to my favorite K-pop songs with rap verses, mixed with singing, mixed with techno sounds. It's the whole eclectic mixed bag of sounds that I love about K-pop songs. And it has that quickening buildup of a pre-chorus that I love. Just so many things I love about structures of certain songs. LOL always delivers. Number 13, Seodo with Perfect. His new album, which just has the songs on it, David and From You. The video for David follows him spend time with this charcoal painting he's obsessed with. And he takes it out to dinner where he serves the diamonds. Side note, diamonds for dinner sounds like a great name for a band. He serenades it with instruments. He just spends a lot of time with this painting. I won't tell you how their love story ends. You could probably guess, but I'll let you watch the video and see for yourself. The thing about Seoto that I really like is that 
He is one of those voices that is so unique and so irreplaceable. His voice just carries a song and makes it go from dull to just mesmerizing, which is so impressive. His music is kind of melancholy, it's heavily piano-backed, but it remains interesting thanks to his voice, which is just, I can't say enough good things about. This is a great follow-up to Night Sea. There are a couple versions of that song, but make sure you check out the Seodo version, S-E-O-D-O. That version of Night Sea is just phenomenal. The way the piano starts out alone, and the sound swells until you get to the chorus, and then you have the haunting drop in volume of the chorus again, and it's just, it is a beautifully done song. So Night Sea is still his best, honestly, but David is a great follow-up. Number 12, Rain, with Pieces by Rain, his new album. This has a really fun mix of sounds. He didn't stick to one super clear-cut category, and I like that. He really just shows that he's always reinventing himself, not just project to project, but song to song, and video to video, and he just continues to prove in so many ways why his career longevity is what it is, because he's constantly connecting with and working with the younger generations of K-pop stars while still having a true to rain sound. It's a really interesting and organic career evolution he's had. This new EP includes Magnetic featuring Jackson Wayne, which features a music video where they basically roam around a museum where everyone else is frozen in time, goals. Then there's Why Don't We, his collab with Chun Ha. Which it has an interesting harp sound in the beginning that reminds me of Psycho by Red Velvet, and then it just really suddenly picks up the pace and goes off in the choruses. On the song Come Over, he is joined by three members of the rookie group Cypher, which he helped create. And I love that for them, having their idol collab with them and boost them up that much and give them that much promo. Lastly, I recommend the track Aurora because I didn't even recognize Rain's vocals on it. And not that I don't like Rain's vocals, but it's just, it goes to show how much he does have that range. And he contains multitudes as a musician. Aurora really puts that on full display because I assumed I was listening to someone else's ballads like Yoon Jong Shin or something. Some sort of power ballad, emotional track from someone like a Yoon Jong Shin. So then to realize it was Rain was like, oh my gosh, this guy has, he always keeps us guessing. He has such an unpredictable quality to his work, which is great. Number 11, Pentagon, with their new album, Love or Take, especially for its title track, Do or Not, which is a really fun twist on the he loves me, he loves me not theme. Kind of like the desperation in the song Daisy, they take that loves me, loves me not flower now, and they say, hey, we're sick and tired of this. Just tell me if you want to hang out or not. Do or not. Yes or no. I'm done with this loves me, loves me not game. They are fed up. But they are fed up in classic Pentagon style, where they're still just so optimistic and goofy and playful about it. So they've got these fun pink suits and they're dancing and hanging out in the school gym. At the beginning of the video, they've got this cool intro where they're just watching themselves on TV, singing as a retro acapella group of sorts. Their music continues to be packed with whistles and other fun sound effects. It's interesting because it is classic Pentagon again, but to me it seems now very reminiscent of N Flying sound, leaning into that guitar-rooted sound, and that's not a bad thing. It's cool to watch them explore musically, as always. Pentagon being so hands-on in their work really allows them to stay innovative in that way. Number 10. Woods with the Set album as well as the single Feel Like, which is the best song. Although I love that he collabed with Moon on Touche, because Moon deserves a lot more. She is a beautiful voice, and I want to see more from her in the future. Woods really has found his strong suit musically, I think. He's played around with some lighter concepts, but I think his strong suit is the song Trigger from his last comeback. That, I think, was a moment for him. Even though it was just a B-side, to me, that was... A song that made me think, stick in this musical direction, this is where you thrive. And I think he took that advice because it feels like Trigger walked so feel like could run. This song is just, it takes that, that casually snarky character acting of sorts in his singing voice and videos and just turns it into a new direction. It's got this really great bass line that is not too busy or too dull. 
it's just a really well done song and it taps into that unique persona he has as a soloist that I'm excited to see him really embrace. Number nine, Fakey with 99. This is a song from a J-pop group that I really like. It has kind of a doo y feel. It's kind of retro and fun and it's got a lot of trumpets and it's just very lively. But it also has this extra little sass in it that I love when they say things like, I'm not a psycho, I just love Inception. And they have these parts of the song that are bleeped out, just jokingly, like they don't say certain words in the song. It's just a very funny, sassy, playful song. It's kind of a little Glee Monster meets Wiki Mickey. Retro flair J-pop meets that classic fun K-pop sound of like Picky Picky era Wiki Mickey. And it's got these great dance breaks. Where they say you're the one to make it 100, that's why the song's called 99. You're the one that can make it 100. Number 8, BDC with The Intersection Discovery. They have a really fun, hopeful, adventurous sound to their music. And I really love a series. I love K-pop music video world building. And that is what BDC has been working on. Because they had Shoot the Moon, and now they have Moon Rider. And the same storyline is continuing and this video ends in another to-be-continued place. The boys are still plotting how they're going to take care of this moon. It's a long story, but it's fun to theorize over, and they just have a lot in store, and I can sense that a lot is on the way from them, and I'm ready for the ride. It's also got great lyrics about, if along the lines of, if I can't get to you during the day, I'll get to you at night. Like, we'll come together at night and hang out then. We will find a way to do this Shooting for the moon, even if you miss landing among the stars, is kind of their thing. Number seven, Purple Kiss with Ponzonia. And the album it comes from, Into Violet. Purple Kiss is the new girl group from RBW Entertainment, Mamamoo's agency. And they have a really unique vibe, not just from Mamamoo, but from other girl groups. They're taking that goth-adjacent K-pop image that some girl groups like, like Dreamcatcher and Pink Fantasy, but they're doing it completely in their own way, which is really interesting. They still have the evil spells concept, they have that the scenes with devil horn imagery and things like that, but it's all telling a story in a way that stands out from another dream catcher. It's not derivative. They also have a unique sound. Ponzonia is a great title track to pick. It's got these violins and this haunting vocal where they keep saying purple kiss and they're talking about leaving their mark on you. It's a bit of a vampirous type of situation, it sounds like. So they're just making this sound very cinematic, and you are just gripped when you listen to it to know what happens next. You also always know it's about to go down when, in a K-pop video, someone literally plants their flag on the setting. ATs does that, Everglow has done that, now Purple Kiss has done that, and... When they plant the flag, things are getting real in the story. So lots in store that I'm excited for in the future. It's a very intricate visually video, lots going on, and color scheme wise, and symbol wise, prop wise, lots to look at. But the big takeaway that I would give skeptical listeners who aren't sure if they want to check out this group would be that the intro, Crown, sounds a lot like a Billie Eilish song. And that's a good thing. It's really interesting, though. It sounds so much like a Billie Eilish song. And then they enter this new vibe that's not Billie Eilish-esque with Ponzonia. It's a really interesting mix of songs on that EP. Number six, Murray with Killa, the name of their album and the single off of it. Me and this album packs the punch. It is so fast-paced. It is so hyper in the best way. It has some song credits from... Andy Love, who we just interviewed on the show, so full disclosure, but aside from that, I do want to put it on this list anyway because it really is a well-done album. It's such a fun burst of energy in every second. It's a very impactful debut release from them. The video for Killa is very sci-fi. It's really interesting. It's got this whole robot concept. There are robots everywhere, robots on the escalators, robots they dine with. Robots that they try to get away from and wash the wash the robot off of them after hanging out, but it doesn't work. It seeps into them. Long story short, they're getting there's a robot invasion they're getting to face. The video plays a lot with the concept of what's virtual reality versus reality reality, with the fact that, for example, it starts out with the ocean scene and then 
The camera pans out and you realize it was just a green screen picture of an ocean. And you see something not just from a different angle, but from a totally different reality or a different, a different, a way of seeing a totally different world, not just a different way of seeing the world, a way of seeing a different world. You'll know what I mean if you watch the video. <laughs> Number five, DPR Ian with mood swings in this order, in the singles off of it, including So Beautiful, Nerves, and Scaredy Cat. DPR Ian has a really interesting voice. It reminds me a lot of Harry Hudson or some other more indie sounding artist. And his sound musically is distinct too. It's very alternative. No other word I can think of that better describes it. It's got these unsettling but effective music videos as well. Like in Scaredy Cat, he's in a straight jacket trying to escape someone or something. And fair warning if you want to watch the video for nerves, there is quite a lot of gore and blood in one scene. So be aware of that. But he takes on these, these demonic personas in certain scenes. He seems possessed. There's a lot going on there. It's kind of a horror movie. His works are kind of, they feel like psychological horror. If they were movies, that's the genre they would fall in. Really curious where his story goes, and his creepy, unique vibe is just really intriguing. The best song is Nerves, by the way, so make sure you check out that one. Number four, Baekhyun with Bambi, the name of his new album and the title track. Now I'm going to miss Baekhyun while he's off in the military more than I thought I would. He left us with a beautiful parting gift, but it is so bittersweet to receive that. I love that he did make sure that his parting gift to us basically was one that let his vocals shine. That really is a gift because he's one of those artists who could make the phone book sound lovely. He has a beautiful voice and to just let him belt it out, especially in the chorus when he belts out, or in the bridge when he belts out Neverland, that is a moment. So I love that he gets to just let his vocals shine and the R&B instrumentals may seem relatively basic, but again, he's one of those artists who makes them sound interesting. The B-sides you should check out from that album, All I Got and Love Scene. Baekhyun in this video is on this train ride and he gets rained on. It's really dramatic and cinematic. I love when he wears the top hat. It makes me nostalgic for his singing in the rain days. And Baekhyun talks about how Bambi, depending on how you pronounce it, means different things. So Bambi in Korean means night rain. But of course he did know that Bambi means it represents the deer from the movie. Interesting contrast they are trying to sing about both at once that gentle spirit with, of course, a very sorrowful tone mixed with just a night rain. Number three, Grayish with the M album and the Blood Night video. I was so pleasantly surprised. I honestly have not been a big fan of this girl group, but wow, did they take things next level. And they gave me what I was missing, and I didn't know I was missing it so much. They have the second generation girl group sound reminiscent of Kara and... Maybe some girls' generation, maybe some tiara, brown-eyed girls. It's what I've been missing. It is so good. This song, Blood Night. Also, they have some updated versions of tracks they've released previously on this album. Candy has this very fun feel. It sounds like, I describe it as a runaway piano sound. I don't know a better technical term for it, but it has that runaway piano sound that I love. I think you'll know what I mean. Johnny Go-Go is a song with big brown-eyed girls energy. And lastly, With a Smile has this very, kind of has this J-pop-esque sound in some ways. It's very Niju-esque. It is just a really, a really powerful new album that I hope takes their popularity to new heights. Number two, Wavy with the album Kickback and its music video. The content from this Wavy comeback has wonderful for my out-of-control inner and citizen theorist. Because this song has so many lyrics like, jump over the sea of time, there's no time and space to be lost, transcending beyond time, all about breaking the space-time continuum and entering this limitless space, a concept throughout all NCT subunits work that I've dissected at length in NCT talk episodes of the show. Won't go into it again here, but just saying this is a great addition to my thoughts about that whole theory and the concept they're working with. Also, what I talked about in NCT Talk that remains relevant, they continue to have lyrics about the blurring of lines between what's real and what's not, saying things like the fantasy became true. Then, of course, there's the time loop, they're 
moving in reverse at one point, we see 10 upside down for a second, the flashing red light, I could go on and on, but all to say that this is so high on my list because it did get me just so excited, just as a hardcore end citizen, to continue to have more clues and more theory content to work with. But the album itself, aside from my just super biased end citizen status, is a really great, well-done album that allows their vocals to shine in different ways. It's quite a mix because you've got songs like Action Figure with the trumpets, and it's just really goofy, and you get to have that side of their performance, their personas. And then they have songs like All For Love in Horizon, which are beautiful and show off more of their vocals. They get a chance to show off their vocal range and their stage persona range through this release. Number one. Drum roll, please. I have a feeling you all knew this was coming, though. 80s, and everything 80s released this month. The fireworks slash I'm the one video is extra interesting given the new context. 80s revealed in a recent interview the Zero Fever albums are meant to be prequels to the All to Action series of albums. This really makes a lot of sense and flips some of my theories about their music video world on their head. Because this video lays out how they basically had a choice between two worlds, and they figured out which one they want to stay in and marked their territory with a flag, created their own new society, basically, and abandoned the old one. And then that masked figure shows up to try to find them, but they're gone. They went to the other world. So then all of these other videos, like Answer and Say My Name, have happened once the masked figure has found them and then is interrogating them about abandoning the old world. So I wonder if the masked figure is meant to represent a parent, a teacher, someone who's trying to tell you to conform and take a certain path in life, as opposed to just bucking the status quo to do your own thing, and they're resisting that. I wonder if that's the content, that's what we should interpret the masked characters to be. I have a lot of new thoughts and theories now to think about when it comes to ATZ's universe. This video added a lot of new, intriguing context to think about. Sonically, this album is... Truly their best. I do think they've continuously one up to themselves. You have classic AT songs like, please excuse the pun, but the explosive fireworks song. That is just so in your face. I'm so excited for the day we get to rock out to that as a group live. So you have songs like that that bring the energy to a 100 that are classic ATs, but you also have some newer sounds for them. You have the Different for them, melodic structure, their rapping in the song The Leaders follows. Then you've got Take Me Home with the saxophone riff that I'm still obsessed over in those 80s synth vibes. Then they experimented even more with some gospel influences on the song Celebrate. It really is so experimental for K-pop and for any artist, what they've done. They're really just playing around with different genres right now, and it's working for them. And it's fun to watch this journey and hear their journey as they decide what path works for them. And I'm totally fine if in the future they decide no path specifically works for us. We're going to keep experimenting every time. I also want to take a second to shout out their Japanese album that just dropped. It feels like Japanese releases from K-pop stars do not get promoted or talked about much at all by comparison to their K-pop releases. But worldwide, they should get the same acclaim because they're usually, if not always, as good. And this one is really good. It's called Into the A to Z. They have this new song in there called Still Here, which has that triumphant, youthful spirit we can expect from ATs. It has this really great energizing buildup. It's really just this job well done. So that is the top 20. Here are my honorable mentions in no particular order. K-pop fans, I think, will like the J-pop artist PKCZ's new song, Glamorous. It has a similar breakdown and structure to how K-pop songs sound. And it's very club-ready, it's such an earworm, it's ready for sing-alongs, ready for live performances, giving me FOMO and ready for the future. Dreamcatcher just released a new Japanese album called Eclipse that is classic Dreamcatcher sound and I love it. Yoon from Winner has his first full-length album out now. It's called Page, and it has this old-school rock sound, kind of like Yoon Johnshin, who I was thinking of when, when I was thinking about how Yoon from Winner was actually performing instinctively by Yoon Johnshin on Winner's Tour, and I loved that live, and I thought this is the perfect sound for him. And now on this album, he's embraced that sound and collaborated with Yoon Johnshin himself. 
He has found his element already with his debut album, and I love the message of the title track Aya, which is all about embracing your inner child. Uverworld has a new EP called Hourglass that is incredibly dope. It has this kazoo kind of harmonica-ish sound. It has a lot of synths. It's got a lot of guitar mixed with... It's a mix of a lot, and then it has the saxophone riff that I didn't expect. It's got a lot of twisted and turns in just a few minutes, and I'm obsessed. The soundtrack for Chanyeol's new movie, The Box, is out now, and it is a great soundtrack. It has the song Breaker Box, and then a lot of covers. Songs that I'm a big fan of. He has a very unique twist on Bad Guy by Billie Eilish. Scandal has a new song out called Eternal. And I have a very polarizing opinion here, but I like the remix better because it's so weird. It kind of starts with an intro like the Too Cool for School era intro from BTS. It's just got such a weird mix of sound effects in that remix. I think it's so funny and sounds so distorted. And I always get upset when a remix is basically just a slightly altered version of the original. Like, experiment with the song and give it a true remix, or don't. Or just don't touch the song. And so this remix did take the song and totally reinvent it. Taeyeon's Dark Clouds, of course I love. I'm excited for more from him. My C-pop queen is finally back. I freaking almost cried tears of joy. Jolin Sai, she has a new song out with Rehab the DJ. It's called Stars Align, and I am ready to dance to it live someday. And lastly, the Korean band Buzz has a new song called Analog. And I like the song, but I like the music video even more because it's just so interesting. It's when this little girl in a bright yellow dress, no matter what action is frozen in time in the video, they're still just looking at their phones instead of each other. And this little girl is looking at them like, you're crazy, why aren't you going out there to do more and have more fun with each other? Then a bunny shows up and everyone gathers around not to take care of it and figure out why it's lost, not to hug it, or even really to oogle at it too much. They just put a glass box over it so they can take pictures and the bunny won't run away for their pictures. So the whole video is about like Instagram photo ops at all costs. One thing leads to another. The girl gets more and more upset with these people, tries to save the bunny, and quite the interesting karma, I guess you could call it, affects the phone users. That's all I'll say for now but it's called Buzz by Analog and is definitely worth checking out. That is all for today. If it's not up by the time this episode is out, it will be very, very soon by the time you hear this. My written, more in-depth discussion about and reviews of these top 20 picks will be featured on the blog page on 17 Karat K-Pop's website. So you could go there and you could find a link there to a Spotify playlist of all the songs I talked about, including honorable mentions as well as a YouTube playlist to watch all the videos I've talked about today, including the last one and other honorable mentions. Thank you all for listening to my thoughts and opinions today. I'd love to hear yours too. Feel free to leave a comment on the site. Thank you all for the support as always, and I will talk to you all again very, very soon.